Hi, chaps. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. First to you, Wayne, it's a slightly different topic. Um, this week, there's been a lot of coverage of the issue of dementia in football. And as one of Manchester United's greatest players, I'm so you, sure you're very sad to hear the news about Nobby Styles and Bobby Charlton. How important is it, do you think, that research is done into this disease to ensure that football is as safe as possible for your generation and your children's generation as well? Yeah, it's very important to think um, the amount of football players who have died in over recent years is, um, from the disease is, is too many. And um, I, th I just think it's difficult to see former players dying so young um, and knowing that football might have been a part of that is, is really sad and you feel sad for the, for the families of, of these guys who've passed away with, with this disease. So I think the more research that can be done, the better, of course. And if that means um, certainly with young, young children, stopping them from heading the ball in training um, and now how it's going to work in terms of stopping players heading the ball in games, I don't know, but clearly something needs to, to change and something needs to happen to make sure this doesn't happen to, to the next generation of players um, once they get to the age of 50 um, where you know, young men are dying of, of, of this disease. I think it's, um, it's very sad. It's a difficult question for you both to answer, but Wayne, does it ever cross your mind as someone who you headed the ball a fair share during your... 20s, you had the ball of chair now. Do you ever wonder about the future in that respect? Not really. I think there's, there's times when you see um, these things happen, you see them, you know, former players losing their life because of it, of course, it, it crosses your mind. Um, if that's a, a normal thing to do, I think, and obviously having young children, you don't want to lose your life. Um, so early because of you had the ball too many times. So, yeah, it's it's a difficult one to to answer, and for, I'm sure for the, for this research going on, I'm sure people are looking into why this is happening and, and trying to come up with the best solution. But yeah, it's 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 sad, and if if not having the ball so many times in training means you're going to live an extra 10, 15 years, then I think that's the the natural thing. The, the the thing that makes the most sense to, to be able to do. Would you echo those thoughts, Liam? Yeah, for sure. I think your health is your wealth. And, and, and for me, um, I remember speaking to Taylor Twelman. I met him in the Sky Studios. He's a big campaigner in, in America for the very reasons of trying to limit the amount of heading that's done for, for children under, I think it's under teenage age, so under 13, because obviously in terms of your neuroscience, your, your brain is in that developmental phase. So I think the more research we do, and uh, the more the more time that we take to to make sure that you know young players are safe, um, the better for for everybody. Uh, so for me, you know, it's, it's, I hear people say it's nothing better than seeing you know, like a cross and a fantastic header into the top corner, and I agree. But it can't be at the expense of people's health, you know, after their career, and not just for them, but for their families. And as Wayne's rightly said, everybody involved. So like in anything, the more research you can you can take into a subject, the better. I think Thank just very much. But you know what Liam said, my my eldest boy obviously when we lived in the States um was in a football team and Heaven was banned mm. um, for them in training and, and in games. So I think I always I like I was thinking how could the ball be coming into a, a young kid and him not head it? But did, no one done it. If the ball was coming to the head, he moved away from it and let it run run through. So maybe that's something which um, can happen on a more regular basis over here. Thank you. Hi Wayne, hi Liam. Um, just just a question for Wayne just quickly. Um, since the news on Saturday evening, I was just wondering how you found it away from the club in terms of what you're thinking in your mind. I mean, you speak to all these, whenever a new manager gets a job, it's like you're waking up at three in the morning thinking about who to pick, who to play. I think Steve Clark called it the land of no sleep. I was just wondering how you're finding it basically. Yeah, fine. I think um, I've always been quite good at keeping myself up, and I think it's important uh, while I'm at the club, I do do the work that needs to be done. I mean, we all do the work, obviously. You can leave the no sleep to me. 
No, but I've um, always found the balance of when I, when I go home, um, I try and put football away for the time being and, and have my family life. So it's, um, but of course, there's decisions which, um, and there's things we have to speak about with me and Liam have been in constant communication at home and just on the phone over certain things. And But I think in the main, I'm, I'm quite, I'm okay uh, um, switching myself off. Just for the four of you, I mean, you don't know how many games it's going to be, but it could be two, it could be three, it could be five or six. I mean, is it is it is the key making it, giving yourself as good a case as possible to get this, you know, till the end of the season at the very least, Wayne? Just first of all, no, I don't think we've we've looked that far ahead. And being honest, I think um, the main priority for for us was to come in this week and get the players enjoying coming in, get them working out and fighting for the shirt of a weekend and that's been our main goal. Obviously there's which tactical stuff we were trying to flip into the into the players. But I think the main thing was um, the first game on Saturday is being as, as good as we can be for that. And you know if, if we win win that game we can start looking to obviously the next game but um, we haven't looked beyond next week to be honest. Okay, and Liam, just obviously you got your pro license. I think it's four years ago now. Um, you know, you're obviously very highly regarded around the club. This is like the next logical step, isn't it? I suppose. It's like I said before, and you know, to an earlier question, and going back to your original question, I'm not thinking about myself. Wayne isn't thinking about himself. We're thinking about the football club and winning games of football. I think if you get too drawn into who the next manager is going to be, and all the things that you can't have an effect on, you lose the things that you can have an effect on. And what we can affect at the moment is our coaching, the way that we want to play, how the players taking accountability and plays and anything. How we want the right tactical idea for the game to better them. That's it. The rest in terms of who the next manager will be, will it be me, will it be Wayne, will it be someone else? It's not coming to our heads because we trust me, when you go even from being a first team coach to being a lead, you do start losing sleep and you do start yeah. and you start thinking even more about the game. So if I had even more time to think about those things, I probably would. But right now we're focused on what we can affect, which is the game on Saturday and the game on Wednesday against Middlesbrough. All the best for the weekend. Alright guys, so um, on Saturday you obviously there's been the chance to... Sure. Hello. Who is it? Is it me? Is it me guys here? Yeah? Can you hear me? Definitely, yeah. I'm guessing I'm next on the list, so I'll just ask you. Wayne, when you, I remember when you came into the club in the January, you'll, you'll correct me on this one wrong, I think you said that you were hoping to get your necessary qualifications by the Christmas time, but obviously there's been this completely unexpected um, interruption with the pandemic, etc., etc. And I just wondered where you are up to on the ladder, if you like, of getting your... Um, your coaching exams? Yeah, I think as you said, it was um, the plan was to have me A finished by, by June in one and then apply for me pro license in the July to start that in January coming up. But obviously with um, what's happened that has been you know, there's been a little delay on that. Um, so yeah, still working on finishing the, the A license and, and then Obviously, applying for the pro license, so um, that's where I'm at. How does that affect on? So, just say, for example, the decision had to be made in, let's say, two weeks' time or three weeks' time. Where does that actually leave you in what you can and can't do? Yeah, I don't think that has any, any effect um, on anything, to be honest. I think um, I don't remember years ago, obviously, the current England manager, um, Gareth Southgate, was completely in badges while he was manager of Middlesbrough, Frank Lampard. The same when he was at Derby, so it's um, as long as obviously you're, you're on the right path and you're, you're putting the work in, then um, that's not an issue. Okay, thanks. Liam, Liam. could I just ask, ask you about the squad you mentioned before? You've got a, a, a virtually fit squad. Uh, Christian Bielik obviously is coming back from a long term injury, and Colin Catherine Richards has been playing catch up, we understand, with, with his fitness as well. How are those two looking at the moment? Yeah, they're looking really, really good. Both have completed training the last three, three days. We now have this 
make about the squad, which we'll do as soon as this press conference is finished. Um, you've got a lot of very, very, very difficult decisions to make. And Christian coming back is a huge boost for the club. But in terms of Christian's injury, this is really, really important. When you come back from the type of injury that he's had, he, he played in 90 minutes against Barnsley and did himself complete justice. But we have to think about his long-term development as well. You know, and, and making sure that he's, his program is tailored. We've got fantastic med medical staff at the club. It's tailored for his long-term development because he's just still, still a very, very young player. So there may be times where he plays. There may be times where he dips out of the team. But at the moment, we're making sure that we're managing the players the right way, not just for the short term, but for actually their careers because their careers are so, so important in the long term. Indeed. Another player who came in without much playing time in the past year was Jordan Ibe. He played 45 minutes for the under-23s. We haven't seen him since. The previous manager said that he, he'd been unwell for, for a week, two or ten days. How, how is he? Jordan had a horrendous bout of gastroenteritis, which set him back. He lost a lot of weight. And it was a re really bad time for him because he actually was starting to train really, really well. We knew that he had to have a different plan in terms of his fitness levels, and he was getting there. He was training really, really well, and that came at a really difficult time, which has set him back, unfortunately for him and for us. Um, he's, I saw him back out on the training pitch for the first time today doing his one on one. So hopefully at some point next week he'll be able to rejoin the squad uh, because he's got the ability. It's just making sure we can get him in a place where he can really show that ability. And just what, finally, Wayne, uh, it was mentioned obviously during pre-season you had a, a slight back issue, back, back problem which affected you a little bit. I'm just wondering how you're feeling at the moment. Are you feeling a lot better after that? Yeah. Um... Yeah, just had a, a back issue which um, kept me out of a couple of games. Um, I think that's normal uh, at my age. I've seen that. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the players. but no, to be honest, I've been really fortunate throughout my career having suffered many um, muscle injuries or, or back injuries, if you like. Um, so yeah, I um, had it for a couple of weeks and um, it's gone. I haven't felt it since, so that's all fine. So yeah, just finally again, just to the two of you, you mentioned obviously Bristol City. What's the feeling at the moment? Is there, is there great excitement about this challenge? Yeah, um, at Bristol, Dean Holden's done fantastically well. Uh, I really like Dean as a guy. He's, he's done the hard yards um, and he, he's done it with dignity as well. I know he's had um, some difficult moments in his life, but he's been a fantastic professional and I was delighted for him to get the job at Bristol and he's showing real quality. He's got two really good experienced coaches with him in Keith Downing and Paul Simpson who obviously had a spell here as well and his team have, have really played well and we know it's going to be a difficult challenge on Saturday um, but in terms of us we, we, I'm loving it you know we're sitting and watching Bristol City we know the systems that they may play we know their personnel we, we know there might be one or two players that have got a real motivation to score against us on Saturday as well and we need to find a way to cope with that so any, any, anyone particular you're talking about? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and Chris Murray as well, who had a, you know, some unbelievable times here. So we know both of those two are very, very good players. And we need to find a way not only to stop them, what I want to see us do and what we want to see them do, is then we want to see us impose our game. We don't want to speak so much about the opposition. We want to speak about our strengths and we want to go and dominate the game. And that may be naive and arrogant and from young coaches to say when you're bottom of the league. But we believe in these players. We believe in their qualities. And we believe that the best way to play is to, to play our own game. And I, I don't mind saying that in a pre-match press conference before a game. Yeah, good luck. Let's wrap it up there, guys. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers guys. Thank you. Thank you.